Hi, I'm Tom. I'm here with Greg. Today we're going to review uh, Pub Battles uh, Gettysburg. It's published by Command Post Games and uh, the rules were published in 2018. Uh, it is a uh, uh, one map uh, and it uses the uh, uh, wooden blocks, Kriegspiel style. And uh, we're going to review uh, what you get and how do you play it. All right, Tom, well, let's talk about what you get when you buy uh, right. a copy of a, a Pub Battles game. Right. So you're going to get a like a 20 by 23 map uh, printed on uh, a canvas. Mm -hmm. So beautiful maps. The maps are outstanding. They're, they're, they're really, <laughs> they're really nice. They're usually started from some historical source and right. edited and then printed on the canvas. And then you're going to get the... Uh, Wooden blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there yep. you go. Got a couple of them right here. That's right. And so you'll get those blocks, and you'll have some labels, and you'll have to apply the labels. But there's never that many units in these these games that it's too onerous. Right. Um, and then you'll get uh, some dice, and uh, you can acquire some measuring uh, chains from them, or you can use rulers. Right. I do think the chains or some kind of string are sort of a really nice idea because yeah. it is sort of free moving on the map and it's nice to be able to curve the chain or the string around as you as you trace the block. You get the rules with it. Uh, these are the standard pub battle rules. So the, these would apply to, to any other games like Marengo, which is one we've played as well. Right, they have a whole series. Uh, and then these are the Gettysburg specific rules. And what you're going to get on he in here are things about initial deployment, uh, reinforcement schedule, and some alternate rules. Interesting enough, uh, they have some alternate scenarios in here. What if Jackson was in mm -hmm. Gettysburg? Right. The favorite. Yes. Uh, so that's what you get between the two rules, the map, the rules, and the wooden blocks. Uh, and you're good to go in just about any situation, including a pub. <laughs> All right, well, now let's talk about how you actually go ahead and, and play this game. And luckily, in the case of pub battles, including the Gettysburg game, it's pretty damn easy. It sure is. <laughs> uh, setup uh, is dictated by the uh, the book. It'll tell you exactly which pieces you're going to need if you're playing day one, two, or all of the days, where they enter the map. You just pull those pieces out and get them lined up. And importantly, it'll tell you which chits you have to put in the bag. The chits are a very important part of this game. So there's a, there's a little circular chit for each core. They all go into a bag and one at a time you pull those chits out of the bag and that determines the turn order of who gets to move when. That's right. So you pull the chits out of the bag. There is a uh, rule in there that you can try to interrupt somebody else's turn. That's a very neat mechanic. Yeah, so it's either maybe you don't want to go at that point. You'd rather try to go later. Right. So you can roll to attempt that, or you can try to go before somebody. Yeah. Uh, so that does help, uh, and there's a useful... You know, the mnemonics in this game is really about flipping those over so you know if you've attempted that. So it's not too hard. You could have a whole chain of attempted interruptions, but it works pretty well. Right. In addition to these rectangular unit blocks, there's also some little cubes that are your leader blocks, your generals. And once a general makes his attempt to try and interrupt, then you've got to, you know, rotate his cube so you know you can only try that one time per turn per general. Right. Uh, so once you've decided to go and haven't been interrupted, uh, then every unit within that general's command, mm -hmm. uh, so a corps, right. Gettysburg or a division, um, you, uh, you would then go ahead and move those up to their limits. Uh, the only caveat as far as command distance would be in order to get somebody to attack, uh, they have to start uh, within a certain distance of the commander. But in terms of just moving, uh, there's no command and control over that. Yeah, the, the movement distances, they're actually on the back of the quick reference sheet, and if you have a chain or string, you'll base that on that. They're, they're fairly generous based mm -hmm. on the size of the map, so the units are moving very quickly, which makes the game much faster. Uh, there are some terrain penalties if you're moving up or down slopes or if you're moving across a creek, and that is sort of one thing I think that's a little bit finicky about pub battles. You're, you're looking at a historical map. Right. So, and sometimes it's a little tough to tell, like, where the hills and the slopes are. You do have to study that, and you, you need to have a gentlemanly agreement with your opponent, sort of explaining to him, hey, I think this is a slope, this is what I'm going to do. Sure. Uh, definitely not a tournament kind of game. No, <laughs> this it is helps a game. have a few drinks. Yes, yes. <laughs> Scotch or any kind of <laughs> beverage definitely helps the play of this game, because uh, the movement, uh, it does 
Yeah. Right. Well, it's think, a little odd. Well, it, it, it is helped by the fact that most of them are historic. Yes. Uh, so at Gettysburg, if you know Gettysburg, then everybody can quickly agree on what the... <laughs> what the slopes are and, right. and the woods and it and again it's just something you have to kind of agree on I don't want to I don't want to indicate that the features aren't printed on the map oh, because no, they are clear. I mean yeah. you can look at the map it's just sometimes there's so much detail on there that it can be a little tough to tell where sure. you're moving Sure but you're right you you move you have a terrain impact um, and then you try to set up uh, once all the all the units have moved you've right. gone through all the potential command sheds right. all the units on the board have moved and then you conduct combat. Yeah, all the combat is simultaneous after all of the movement, which means, and this is quite interesting, that if uh, and if an enemy unit comes up during his move and contacts your piece, you can just move away. Right. You don't actually have to stay there and fight as long as your chit is yet to be pulled right. out of the bag. Right. Uh, and combat itself in this game is incredibly simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you roll, I think, what is it, 3d6, uh, looking for fours or better That's right. in order to hit, and there's very few modifiers to that. Um, and a unit that has taken a hit flips over to reveal its label. If you've taken two hits, you also have to move away. And if somehow you take three hits in a single combat, you're just gone. Just you're gone. take the piece yep. away. That's right. Interesting thing about the units, so you do have to wait till the end of movement for combat. In the games we've played, and Gettysburg does have it, I think there's always one or two units I think maybe Hood's division, mm, right. uh, where you have elite units, and one of the measures of their eliteness is that they can initiate combat immediately, not wait till the end of the turn. And, and you can certainly see how that could be makes a big difference being able to pin somebody that way. That's right. Yeah. So uh, in Gettysburg, uh, you would play it, and Gettysburg evolved for us as you would expect. Um, and then you get reinforcements uh, for every turn, and uh, there's eight turns each day at Gettysburg. Um, and then uh, overnight, there's a chance for further reinforcements, but also a chance to recover a couple of units that may have been destroyed during the day. They've been reassembled. Right. So I think that works pretty well, but in terms of capturing the flavor of Gettysburg, I mean, I thought it did a great job. Yeah, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, we previously had reviewed Mark Herman's uh, Gettysburg game from uh, C3i Magazine. Mm -hmm. And this is a really interesting contrast to that game because the Herman game is a hex-based game. Right. The movement is very rigid. You described it as very chess-like, mm -hmm. which is accurate. And when you play pub battles, you know, the same battle of Gettysburg, but the rules are very different, equally simple. The movement is much more free-flowing and mm -hmm. free-wheeling in this mm -hmm. game. It just provides a totally different game experience, I think. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think the, the movement in the pub battles does lend itself a bit more to being, uh, I will say, I don't know, aggressive in <laughs> the sense of there's just something you feel like you're moving these pieces up and they're going up the hill to attack and uh, to me uh, it, it, it certainly uh, felt a bit more kinetic in that mm. sense. I mean I love the Herman game, uh, the very different, but uh, I do like the, uh, the, there's a lot of combat in the Gettysburg pub battle game. Yes. At least for us. Yeah, right. Yes. And partly that was because, you know, you felt you were here at Gettysburg, there should be a lot of combat, but it just lends itself to that, I think. Right. Well, in, in uh, Pub Battles Gettysburg, it tells you in the scenario booklet uh, how they're defining victory. You can earn victory points for destroying enemy pieces. Uh, you can win a major victory by inflicting 50% losses on the enemy, which mm -hmm. that actually is pretty tough, yeah. even though casualties come fast and heavy here. 50% is a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Confederates, specifically in order to win the Gettysburg campaign, they have to do the 50% loss uh, victory condition. Right, by so, the end of day three. Right. So, All right. so uh, you know, final thoughts on uh, the pub battles Gettysburg. Great game, beautiful pr uh, presentation, mm -hmm. uh, very fun to play. So. Should you buy a copy, is it worth the cost? And the cost ranges from about 85 to 140. It's expensive. It is. I think the, the 85 is the paper with the blocks and so forth, but to get the canvas version, which is very beautiful, you're looking at close to the 140 range. Yeah, it, you know, they're both expensive options, and honestly, my take on it is that the main appeal to the game, to me, is that amazing canvas map. I mean, you have the canvas version, sort of the deluxe version, and 
I, the map is just, it's stunning. Yeah. I mean, this is something you could hang on your wall. In fact, the map is so nice that I actually think that the blocks... Don't live up to it? ...are a little disappointing. <laughs> it, I mean, it's a block game, so I understand it's a painted block, but right. even, like, the sticker labels, it's just, like, sort of generic word font. It's not period font. Right. I, I think a little bit more attention to detail should have been placed into the blocks, given that the map is... It's premium. Mm -hmm. and there's no way to understate that. So I personally don't think I would even bother buying the paper version. Yeah. I would just get the, if, if you can afford it, go for the canvas version because the game is a lot of fun uh, and the map is, is quite quite beautiful. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I did buy it. Um, I think it's kind of a collector's item right. uh, in terms of the map. I agree about the blocks. They should be mahogany with, you know. <laughs> they ought to just be a little nicer than this, I think, for the price. But uh, I'm, I'm glad to have it. It's a great map. I have their Marengo, mm -hmm. same reason, beautiful map. Uh, it's one of those things I think, you know, I've, I've managed to get some folks to play it who normally don't play war games. Uh, once you get them over the moving the blocks and it's not so rigid, uh, it actually works okay. But uh, I think, it's, a, I think it's, a, it's one of these, it's kind of a, it's so unique. I think in terms of material and what each battle tries to cover that, you know, I'd, I'd say it's worth it. At least try one of them. I, I do think that this is a fantastic introductory game. If you're a veteran wargamer and you want to try to, like you said, introduce some people to the hobby, right. this, this is just a great way to do it because it is cool looking and it's very easy. The rules, there's like five pages of rules to sure. this game, so there's yeah. just not much to know. That's right. Uh, so, it's uh, much like the Mark Herman game that we reviewed previously. I think that if you want to do the entire Battle of Gettysburg without painting thousands of miniatures, uh, both of these board games are very different from each other, but great introductory experiences to the hobby. Couldn't agree more.